Hi, this is Brenda at Luke's, and today we're going to learn about the Viking Sapphire. It's a wonderful machine. It has a large throat space and a strong motor. It's great for sewing and also for quilters. So let's get started. All right, so the Sapphire comes with a wide range of accessories. And in fact, the accessory case is right on the back of the machine right here. So after we review them, we can see where the bobbins would fit in and then all of our feet would fit in. And in fact, the tray lifts out for any additional accessories that I may acquire. All right, so let's put that accessory case back here and go through these. Included with the machine, we've been using the A foot. Included is a B foot, which is used for your decorative stitches. The C foot, which is for a corded buttonhole. The E foot, which is your zipper foot. The J foot, which is for edging. The D foot, which is for a blind hem. The H foot, which is a glide foot. It actually has a Teflon backing, so if you're sewing onto vinyl or pleather, it will glide across that surface that you're sewing on. The R foot is for darning. And this is your automatic button holder and that actually ties into the mind of the machine and will size your buttonhole for you automatically. Also included is a quilting bar, so you can do quilting stitches in straight rows. This is a utility uh, piece that allows you to, to snick this under the back of the pressure foot and hold that up so you can go over heavy seams. For example, if you were sewing uh, blue jeans, you need to go over that heavy, heavy seam. Sewer's best friend of course, the seam ripper. These are self-adhesive guides that will turn any foot into a glide foot. Machine comes with five bobbins. It also uses the, um, the screwdriver. These are thread nets, so if I'm using a fancy thread like a metallic thread or a spool where the thread seems to jump off the spool, I can put this around the spool of thread to stabilize it. We know about the brush, we've cleaned our machine. Comes with a, a pack of needles for you. Two felt pads that go behind the spool of thread, just again for more stability. And then this is a pen that you can use to mark on your projects, then the marks will disappear over time with air. So it's kind of a, a disappearing pen. So all of these accessories come with your machine. All right, so first we're going to wind a bobbin. I'm gonna take my bobbin, making sure that the Husqvarna logo is up, place it on the spindle. Taking my thread, it's coming off the front of the spool. I'm going through the tension disc. Let's try that again. And I'm going to go through the guide here to the top of the spool and wind it around. All right, then I'm going to push the, the bobbin You'll notice that it engages. I'm going to push on my foot pedal and get a few spins. And if I need to, I think mine's already gone. The tail, I can clip that off. We're going to go ahead and wind some thread on that bobbin. All right, when we push that back and pop the bobbin off, notice there's a handy cutter right here for the thread. And it cuts it off. Notice the thread comes off the left-hand side. I'm going to drop it in. Again, with the Husqvarna Viking symbol up top, the thread goes down into that little valley, that little niche. I'm holding the bobbin. You're gonna hear a little, ooh, that nice little click. And I'm going to place the thread right there. All right, so the next thing we're going to learn is how to thread the sapphire. Thread comes off the front, and you'll notice that I have a spool cap on the spool of thread. In fact, this machine comes with three spool caps. You want to use the cap that is closest in size to your spool of thread. We're going to take the thread, pass it behind that first thread guide, pulling it down, go up, down through the tension discs, making a U-turn up. I'm going to go behind that hook, and it'll snick right into the front. Use your flywheel to make sure that that hook is at the top for ease of threading. When the thread comes down here at the bottom, I'm going to go and 
thread the lower thread guide. So the thread's going over to the left. See that little hook? The thread is going to pull right through there. So it goes right behind it. And now we're gonna use our needle threader. So I'm gonna put the foot down. Now this is a nice computerized machine. To put our pressure foot down, I'm touching the down button, which is right here on the control panel. All right. Our needle threader, I'm going to pull it down and rock it forward. The thread goes behind the hook on the left and it's gonna go right between these hooks and I'm gonna go and pull that thread up at a slight angle. When I pull the handle towards me, it rocks that thread back through the eye of the needle. I'm gonna dump it off the front and look at there. Just that quickly, our machine is threaded. So I'm gonna pull that thread through. I'm gonna go ahead and raise our pressure foot. Okay, the up button is right there. I'm going to pull that through. Using the hand wheel, I'm pulling it towards me. And you'll see that I'm releasing that bobbin thread, pulling it up to the top. Now I have both, put them behind the machine replace our bobbin cover, which is right here. It's gonna slip right on to the machine. And we are ready to get sewing. All right, so let's talk about setting the sapphire up for sewing. The machine has a wide variety of stitches, and to do that, we need to talk about our control panel here. This is a computerized machine, which makes it easy to access all the stitches and to tailor them for exactly what we want. So let's start here. It looks almost like a telephone to keypad, doesn't it? Those are the most commonly used stitches. So we see, of course, number one is our straight stitch. And if I go to, let's just go to number five because another common stitch, that's our zigzag. We'll talk about all of these real quick. Number two, while it looks like a lightning bolt, that's actually a straight stitch for our stretch fabric. Number three is our triple stitch, which is used for top stitching. Right here is what I like to call the Walt stitch. If I choose that, you'll notice it's one, two, three stitches up, one, two, three down. It's actually used to sew on elastic. We talked about our zigzag stitch. We see number six is our overcast, and then a couple of applique stitches, seven and eight, and then of course to sew on a button or make our button hole. So these are the most commonly used stitches and in fact, while we're looking at most commonly used, the sapphire sets you up for success. It asks you right here, going A across to G, what you're sewing on. So if you're a quilter sewing on traditional woven fabric, the most commonly used selection is B. In fact, when you see B, it's chosen right here, it's reflected on my control panel as woven medium. If I'm sewing on a lighter weight woven, okay, it's indicated, or if maybe even I'm using C with something like denim or canvas. So those are my woven fabrics. If I'm going to work with a knit fabrics, light stretch fabric, okay, or if I'm sewing on just a regular, like a golf shirt, or if I'm going on a real heavy, uh, like a sweatshirt, okay, so it gives me all of these. And of course our last one, G is for leather or vinyl, or as I like to call it, pleather or fake leather. And you'd be surprised, that's fun to sew on. So what that does is it sets up the machine for the stitch length and for the tension. It also recommends, if I'm using just a straight stitch, it recommends what foot to use, which this is selecting my B stitch. It sets up the stitch length and it sets up the stitch width. So let's talk about those. So we see the standard stitches, what I'm sewing on, and now we're gonna talk about changing those settings. So you see right now we're on woven heavy. Let's go back to typical quilting or garment sewing, which we know is woven medium. Right there, it switched my stitch length to 2.5, which is traditional, that's the 2.5 stitch length. And of course, my needle position is right in the center. But maybe I need a little bit longer stitch. I can change that with my negative and positive. So if I want that stitch length to be three or longer, right here is where I can change that. Right here, I'm on a straight stitch. This is also used for the width of that stitch, but if I'm sewing a straight stitch, why would I change the width? Well, that becomes 
the positioning stitch, actually the positioning of the needle. So when we look back over here at the needle, you'll notice that when I'm hitting the negative, see that needle dance to the left? If I hit the plus, that needle is dancing to the right. Now, why would I use that? I might use that if I am creating perhaps a quarter inch seam allowance or if I'm top stitching and I wanna have that needle in a specific position. So when I'm straight stitching, okay, stitch number one, this becomes my needle positioning. If I wanna get right back to the center, I can just hit number one and you'll notice it goes back 0, 0.0. All right, so length, width, or needle positioning. All right, so next we're going to look at um, another stitch. We talked about the zigzag. I'm going to select stitch number five. And this I think is a really good way to illustrate both of these. So when we look at the stitch length, you'll notice that it's changing the actual width of the stitch right here on my screen. So I get a, a good look at the length of the stitch. But now I wanna make that stitch closer together. All right. And you can see all of a sudden, I'm really changing that stitch. So maybe I wanna do something like a satin stitch. So let's put those stitches together. So now I've changed the length of the stitch. And again, here, I can affect the width. So I can tailor that stitch to exactly what I want. One of the fabulous things about the sapphire is that it includes a wide variety of decorative stitches. They're illustrated up here on the cover of the machine. But how do we get to them? Let's look at that. Right here on our control panel, you'll notice a button that indicates a stitch. I'm touching that button. And these four icons on my screen match the rows of stitches. So I can use the arrow buttons here to toggle through the rows of stitching. So we're gonna go down here to the number four menu of decorative stitches. Is that the one I want? Okay, it is. So touch okay. And what that's going to do is show me a nice decorative stitch. So um, let's in fact look at, um, uh, let's go here. And we're going to toggle across. And as you see, when I'm going across with the toggle button, it's going right down the row of stitches. Let's pick out something pretty. Um, oh, here, some diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. All right, so we selected the diamond. And as I indicated before, we can tailor what that stitch looks like by changing the length of the stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna just see how it's making them closer together. Okay, and those changes are reflective right on my screen. And again, the width of the stitch, let's make it a little bit smaller. Although, quite frankly, I think I would like the bigger diamonds. How about you? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and do a, a sewing on that. Since we've selected the decorative stitch, we're going to put our foot down. We know that the down button drops our foot into position. You'll also notice I have the fix button lit up. So when I go to make that stitch, the first thing the machine will do is it's going to make a knot on the back of my project, which is fabulous because that allows me to put a nice finished look to what I'm sewing on. So we're sewing our diamonds, so I'm gonna stop. Hmm, how do I get the fabric or the project out? Well, this again is a really nice quilter's machine and garment sewers. You'll notice right here, there's a pair of scissors. When I touch the button, it goes down, cuts both the top and the bottom thread for me and we see our diamonds. All right, so I want the diamonds to point in the other direction. Let's go back to our control panel, select this button here, and when I select it, watch the control. Boop. Now the diamonds are pointing the other direction. Lower the foot, and when they stitch out, it's the same stitch. I'm gonna hit those lovely scissors. But now, instead of the diamonds pointing to the left, they're pointing to the right. So I can take these decorative stitches and tailor them however I like, flipping them both horizontally or vertically. And we know, of course, that we can change the width and the length. So lots of, lots of ways to change what we stitch and how we stitch it. 
Let's go back over here to some of the hard keys on the control panel. We talked about the fix, putting that knot behind the project. We talked about the foot up, the foot down. We know the scissors, but here's one of my favorite buttons. Why would I care about the needle being down? Well, let me tell you, if you are a quilter, this is worth its weight in gold. I'm going to go back just to a straight stitch. So number one, I'm going to turn on my needle down button. Watch, I'm gonna sew. When I stop, the needle stopped down. Do we care about that? Not so much, but what we do care is that sweet little pressure foot jumped up just enough for me to pivot my project. So stop, pivot. So if I'm piecing or I'm applicating, that releases the pressure on the project so I can just make those little adjustments that I need when I'm applicating or turning around a shape. Needle down position. We call it pivot foot, worth its weight in gold. Love that. I have the speed selected here. So if I'm sewing and I wanna just use a, a lead foot on my foot pedal, but I want the machine to regulate my speed, I can turn it down and just put the foot pedal down to the floor and that will regulate my speed right here. Um, I have a start stop button, which I can actually use that instead of the foot pedal. As a sewer though, I think it's much easier to maintain control with the foot pedal, but you certainly have that option. You'll notice the U-turn button. What is that for? When I engage it, use my foot pedal, I'm sewing backwards. And of course the scissors, love the scissors. All right, so we've reviewed our decorative stitches, how to find them, how to change them, going forwards, going backwards, of course the pivot foot and the rest of our hard keys. All right, one of the things that you'll wanna do is take good care of your sapphire by keeping it clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean out that bobbin area. So I took that cover off. I'm using my little screwdriver that's included in the accessories. Pop. I'm gonna take off the needle plate. I'm going to take off the plastic piece that secures my bobbin case. Notice I'm gonna take out the bobbin and the bobbin case. So now I have access down to this lower level. I'm gonna take the little brush that comes with the machine. I'm gonna go in there and dust all of that out. You'd be surprised about the dust bunnies that build up in there and a clean machine is a happy machine. Look, I even have a little dust bunny. So I'm gonna clean that out. Now, we're going to reassemble this. I'm gonna take that bobbin case. See the two little ends? That's gonna go right in the front. This is clicks into position. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the bobbin back in after I drop this gray in. Drop your, your gray securing piece in, and we'll actually put the plate on here. One other thing that I would suggest that you do while you have this open is just go ahead and reset your scissors. Okay, one of the things I found out through experience is that the scissors area is one of the more important areas to keep clean. So after you clean the machine, just go ahead and reset it. It snicks across and goes back and you're ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and put this needle plate back on. Notice I'm going back in at an angle, okay? And then right here, I'm going to take both fingers and I'm going to press, okay, to snap it into position. My bobbin looks like a P. Dropping it in, we know how to do that. Thread goes down into that little niche. We're gonna hear that sweet little click, okay? And we're ready to go.